come in today to make sure that you interact with us. Tell us what city you're checking in from, what state, uh, whatever region. Maybe if you are watching internationally, let us know, um, you know where you are. And it's a great way to connect with fellow high levelers. And by the way, if you're on the fence about high level, no worries. Everybody's welcome. Sit and watch and just kind of understand the whole system. And then we'll go from there. Lauren, if without any further ado, can you do a reintroduction of yourself and Cam and just... Just re reset the whole uh, workshop because I do see a lot of new names today. I assume people were watching on, um, you know, replays yesterday or last night. So if you don't want to, you know, uh, if you don't mind um, just resetting real quick and just letting us know who you are and what the whole workshop is about, that'll be awesome. Yeah, well, we're going to be having some fun today. So this is all about the client generating machine. And uh, today we're gonna be going dive, diving deep into the social media sales system. This is the same system that I've used to generate more than a thousand clients online at zero cost. And it's also landed me on the same stages as Alex Hormozzi, Gary V, uh, the author of Rich Dad Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki. And today I'm joined with Cam. Again, Cam, come on, give us a, an intro. Cam's like the, the behind the scenes guy, but uh, you've worked with some huge names, so. Yeah, let, me go ahead and, let me go to awesome. the mute cam there. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Thank you, Pawson. Uh, yeah, thanks, Lauren. That's obviously a very kind intro. Um, as we sort of said yesterday, I've, I've worked behind the scenes for a number of sort of the top UK marketers uh, for over the last sort of 10 years, and then used a lot of what we learned in that uh, process to build my own uh, fitness company, and then sold out of that, and then moved into growth consulting and that's how I'm now working with Lauren and building out funnels and automations and all those kind of good things. Awesome. Let's see. Uh, let me see if there's anybody here that if this is your first day, uh, type in the uh, type in the number one. If today is your first day, type in two if you were here yesterday. OK, let me just see who's all who's all new here. I'm looking at and by the way, the Zoom inside of the chat, the Zoom chat, the Zoom room, sorry, is intentionally turned off. Uh, and we have our live streaming that are happening in almost all the channels. But I'm paying more attention to our public Facebook page. Uh, it's a lot easier to just uh, go off of one. Okay, I see a lot of twos. All right. Uh, someone says I'm on both. Okay, cool. Awesome. Um, and Lauren, um, I learned something new. I don't know if this is going to work. If you press... F11 on your keyboard, apparently it'll remove the browsers at the top, the browser uh, thing at the top. And it sounds it like it seems it didn't work. Okay, cool. So someone wrote that in the comments. I'm like, let me, let me test it out. <laughs> yeah, I wish it would work. I'm sorry if it's bothering you. Just maybe zoom the screen a little bit so that you don't see All my good. <laughs> All good. Okay, let's get started. Let's do a quick overview of yesterday and then we'll get going with day two content. Yeah, so just an overview so of the client generating machine as a whole. So what we'll be looking at a lot today is building an authority brand online. So whether you already have an audience or not, or you're just getting started, what we'll be talking about today will ensure that you set yourself up to be able to grow an audience or to be seen as someone that people want to work with from the from the very beginning and to even elevate yourself and how you're positioned right now. So we'll be focusing heavily on that here today. So that's the first part of the client generating machine. The second part is the social media funnel. So again, we want to position ourselves as a credible authority figure online so that then when people actually enter into our world, when they raise their hand and say, hey, I'm interested in this, then they already have in their heads that they know who you are, they know what you're about, and they see you as an expert authority figure. So getting someone into your funnel is great, but getting them into your funnel already being pre-framed and pre-sold on why they like you, why they trust you, and why they're interested in knowing what it is that you're all about makes things way easier. And it means that the time that it takes from someone when they first find you to become your client is much, much quicker. And then you don't get to the end of the sales process with all these objections. And that's also largely down to the pre-sale prospects process. So Cam's even gonna be showing the tech stack behind this and how we do this all in high level, how we pre-sell prospects so that by the time they get to having a sales conversation with us, our watertight sales process, they're already sold. And so it actually begins though with the authority brand. 
because we could get someone all the way to you know being pre-sold but it just speeds things up massively if we have the authority brand if we have the social media funnel everything's much much more smooth and it all works seamlessly together to bring in new happy clients and that's how the client generating machine works now obviously that was a super super zoomed out overview what we'll be doing today is we're going into detail showing you exactly how this works now what we already kind of did briefly yesterday was like show you an overview of the machine now what we want to do is fill the machine with prospects fill the machine with leads so that you are consistently reaching more people who are interested in working with you and who like what it is that you are all about and um yeah what what you offer so Paulson I mean I can either keep going or uh if you have any yeah. questions point we can pause yeah. that yeah. yeah, let's, let, you know, ultimately, I think everyone that's watching, you should know that whenever we bring on someone for a high level event, uh, you know, we often verify who they are, what they've done, you know, what kind of success they have. And when we teach some of these things, also remember that results may vary. And, you know, when we imply financial things or anything like that, it doesn't mean you're going to get those types of financial results or even clients for that matter. There's a lot of work behind this. These are unusual things that most most people don't get to. Uh, and I'm saying that with a lot of confidence that the strategy will work depending on what kind of work you do, what kind of work ethic you have, what kind of market you're serving. There's a lot of different variabilities, but I'm excited to kind of get into this with day two. I know Cam's got a lot of things too on the behind the scenes of like what the automations look like. So today, today is going to be a bit heavy. Just so buckle up, you guys, in case if you feel lost and you want to throw up, that's totally fine. Just relax. You'll be fine. You'll be able to watch this on replay on point five if you're listening to me and then you know another person whatever like you can go at your own pace and set up all these automations um, if you're on the fence about high level we do have a 30-day trial which you do need a high level account to set up these automations so that we'll share that here in a little bit or if you if you find the link uh, anywhere uh, jump into it so you can just kind of follow along so yeah, authority branding, social media funnel, pre-sale prospecting, then the conversion process around it, and then retention and expansion, right? So Lauren, help us understand, you know, how to look at the couple of these things the right way. Totally, yes. Yeah. So the first and most important thing that you mentioned is, of course, if you don't build the machine, then you're not going to have a machine that you can pour leads into that then spits out clients. Simultaneously, if you do build the machine, but then you don't take the actions required to actually get leads and interest and attention and people into the machine again, it's not going to work. Now, I have to say, I was really impressed with the high level community because as I was looking on the Facebook page of high level where I saw this was streamed, tons of people were sharing the posts that they had shared from yesterday's event. And so people were actually taking the templates, they were making posts and they were getting leads. And it was really cool to see that a ton of people were getting a lot of interest. Some of them had even said, these are the posts that have had the most engagement that they've ever had on their social media before. And so I just want to say kudos to you and shout out to you, those of you that actually went ahead and shared. Because um, I did mention yesterday, but the way that we do things is we very much take this workshop style. And so we don't want to just sit around here and like passively watch, but rather we want to show up, we want to take action and we want to follow the steps because that's what's going to create momentum. Okay, so I just want to see here who's going to be taking action while we're here live. And this is kind of one of those like cringy market things. But if you're going to take <laughs> action, I want you to drop action below. Just comment the word action because I want to know who's actually going to engage to this because, hey, then we can hold you accountable to that as well to make sure that you're driving this forward because, hey, I want you to get results from this. And that's what we're here to do. Like that's literally why we're putting in this energy and effort to host this for you so that you can generate results with this system. So Paulson, um, how are the comments looking? Are people commenting I saying, see, actually, I've turned yeah. off the screen. So. <laughs> <laughs> I see, okay, Sean, Sony, uh, Dermy. There's a couple of people here. Uh, oh, there's more comments coming in. Uh, Steven says 100% action. Uh, yeah, we've we've got a, a ton of business pages in here that are, I guess, all belong to some of these marketing marketers. They're uh, they're they're seeing action too. Jonathan, yeah, Tiffany, uh, Vera. There's there's a bunch of people saying yes, I'm an action taker. I love seeing the students that are in the front of the classroom versus the the back because I was the guy that was in the back and just like criticizing everything. And then I'm like, okay, I gotta finally 
do something about this, you know? <laughs> so I see, I see a lot of great, great people interacting here. Okay, I love it. Cool. So with that said, today's going to really be all about the authority brand, the social media funnel, pre-sale and pre-sale prospects. Like that's what we're going to be focusing on today, just for some clarity. And uh, just to let you know, we ran a workshop in February 2024. And uh, you can see here, we use this system to get 3,089 people registered for that. And we learned this strategy after sharing more than 50,000 posts on organic social media. It landed me, you know, um, in various different publications all around the internet because my post got picked up by those publications after I shared on social media. And so instead of struggling to get leads, clients and sales, this workshop is where we're going to install a social media sales system that gets ready to buy leads in seven minutes a day. So this isn't going to be something that needs to take you hours and hours every single day. Instead, let's follow a proven process. I'm going to give you the templates that you can share and you can literally just keep using these templates again and again and again to go ahead and get reach leads, clients and sales all through social media. Okay, so let's get into it. Um, to get started, like I said, we always do things workshop style. We want to get some momentum. You guys were commenting action. So for those of you who are ready to take action, let's go ahead and get some leads. So yesterday I asked you, what's a workshop that you did with your clients or a training that you did with your clients that you could actually put together and give away for free? And we showed you how to automate the responses so that when someone does comment or message a keyword, they get the freebie for free. And you may also already have like, Maybe you're a bit more advanced and you have an entire funnel with a free resource that you can already give us like a, you know, a free, a free link and a free opt-in anyways. So whether you have something for free, that's already good, or whether you need to put something together, whether it's your minimum viable freebie that we created yesterday, you know, the three things, or whether it's just a client call recording that you have, I want you to give it away for free today. Okay, so we're going to get started. We're going to have some fun and I want you to share the post after you've shared it as a comment on this live training so that we can go ahead and we can look at it and we can give you feedback, okay? So here's what it says. It literally just says, I'm giving away whatever you're giving away for free today. It's a blueprint to insert the outcome, one access, 100% free, reply keyword, and I'll DM you the link. Okay, so I'll share with you a few examples and let's just go through this line by line, step by step together, because I just want to get some momentum, you know? So as we get into this, we're really in the habit of posting, of taking messy action, because the thing with social media is you can make a post and if you don't like it, you can delete it like two minutes later. It's not like one of these things where you're writing a book and it's going to be out there forever. Social media is an iterative process and you just make posts and then you take the feedback and then you post it again. You make another post, you take the feedback and you post it again. You'll make one post and then maybe it goes crazy and it pops and then you know that that's a template that you can use again and again and again. Now this right here on the screen, this is a template that is proven. This is a template that we post every two weeks because it works so, so well. And uh, we pretty much always use the same copy for ourselves and for my personal brand. Now for you and yourself, it might be different. So what can you give away? So I'll take an example. I was just speaking to one of my clients. Her name is Rachel. And what she does is she helps business owners who are very, very successful essentially get lean, right? She helps them get lean and, and achieve more energy in their day to day. So she could say, I'm giving away lean body secrets for free today. It's a blueprint to lose weight as a female CEO. One access 100% free, reply lean, and I'll DM you the link, okay? That's just me going off the top of my head, right? So now let's do another example. Yesterday we were talking about, you know, <laughs> Paulson kept bringing up like the dental business, right? I knew nothing about the dental business, but I'll just give an example. So let's just say uh, it was this Invisalign topic again, okay? I'm giving away a brand new training Invisalign business growth uh, tactics for free today. It's a blueprint to grow your dental care business using Invisalign treatments. One access, 100% free, reply Invisalign and I'll DM you the link. And then it could just be like a 10 minute training that you've put together explaining how you can sell Invisalign treatments at your dental clinic, just as an example. So Let's get this out. Let's get this posted on social media because then you can let us know in the comments as we go throughout this training here today, the leads that are coming in for, through this. So I'll just read it through one more time so that you can fill in the blanks before we move on, okay? So I'm giving away, and ideally you wanna say, you know, a brand new training. 
So I'm giving away a brand new training or I'm giving away a brand new workshop or I'm giving away a brand new PDF, okay? And then what's the title? So this example that I have here, I'm giving away a brand new training million dollar audience for free today. What's your brand new training? What could the title be, okay? And then that's the first line. Then the second line is just a bit of context, a bit of context about what it is. So it's a blueprint to, what's the outcome? It's a blueprint to outcome. And when I say outcome, replace where I'm saying outcome with what the outcome actually is. So it's a blueprint to sell more from social media, as an example. One access, 100% free, reply keyword, and I'll DM you the link. And then what we did in yesterday's training, remember, you can have the entire automation set up through your high-level account, because when someone replies with a keyword, then the whole thing can be automated. We showed you how to do that yesterday. If you didn't catch that, you can go ahead and watch that replay. So with that said, just to get some uh, fun in the game, that's how we start today. But I want to go through now the entire system when it comes to the social media schedule. So there are five key posts if you want to transform your social media from like, you know, a lot of effort, where it feels slow, where it feels unprofitable, and change it into a goldmine of lead sales and clients who pay you in full. And the really key thing is that these posts must be installed in a particular sequence if you want to transform your social media into an abundance of leads. Now, the post that we just made just here, okay, this one right here, that one is one that's right in the middle there, okay? That one's designed to get more leads. So step number one, though, is about posting the right thing in the right order. So again, we'll get into all of the templates for all the different types of the posts in the moment, but just to give you an overview, um, this is essentially the calendar. And our best clients, they stick to this like a day-by-day -day calendar. So the first column, that is just Monday, second column, Tuesday, blah, blah, blah. So it's just like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, just to keep it really simple and to have the structure. Because what we find is that if there's a structure to stick to, there's adherence. I used to be kind of opposed to like sticking to a content calendar or something because I just wanted to post what I wanted to post when I wanted to post it. But ultimately, these posts really do need to be installed in this sequence because it means that throughout the week, you're warming up the audience and then you're reaping the, uh, you know, potential leads that have come in through the increased top of the funnel stuff. And I'll get into the science behind it in a second. But just so that you know, um, this is just an overview. So before I get into like day by day, I just want to explain a mistake that a lot of people make. And the way that this mistake, it kind of shows up as is maybe you don't get as much reach as you want. Does that resonate? Like maybe you just aren't reaching enough people right now. You just don't, you can't seem to engage with as many people as you want online. Or maybe you get some engagement, but then that engagement doesn't turn into actual prospects. Or perhaps the people that do show interest in working with you, they just don't turn into sales. Which one of those resonates the most? Is it that you can't get enough reach? Is it that you can't get enough leads? Or is it that you can't get enough clients? Let us know. It'll be really helpful because then we can tailor the uh, presentation towards that. Sorry, Paulson, go ahead. No, you got, um, I, I think there's a few people here that's saying, hey, I'm just getting started. I don't have any followers. And if that's the case, um, your reach on more people is probably slim, right? And Same. and one thing I would pay attention to is the type of audience you have versus the, the relevance of content that you're showing that audience as well. So just like like myself, I have I have decent number of followers, but a lot are a lot of them are friends or colleagues or like family members or people I grew up with. It's not a like I don't I won't use my own social to sell often because I don't have any dentists on there. Like if I had my old dental businesses, right? So like it, I would create a profile and follow a bunch of dentists and then create a a whole channel just for that purpose. And that's the way I've done it. Um, thoughts on that, Lauren? Or do you feel like they should just start with what they have and just get going and eventually kind of segment later? Yeah, so, well, it's interesting that you speak about a segment because that's exactly what I'm about to talk about. Totally because <laughs> um, this system is really, like, if you don't have a following right now, this system will solve that problem. So I know that question has come up so many times. That I, don't, I don't know why, but it's like, it's like somehow this objection still keeps coming up. I don't know how else I can say it other than just make the posts. And I think maybe the reason why this is coming up is because I've showed lead gen posts right now. Um, so we're gonna get into different types of posts today. And 
However, even if you don't have an audience right now, you should still get into the habit of doing the lead gen posts. It's just that instead of doing the calendar, uh, you know, exactly like this, you might swap out one of the lead gen posts for one more reach more post. But again, that doesn't make sense right now because I've just done a very brief overview because, you know, Monday, you can see here, Monday is all about reaching more people. Tuesday is about getting leads. Wednesday is about getting leads. Thursday is about getting clients and Friday is about reaching more people. So what you might do in the beginning stages is if you don't have an audience, you might just change the Tuesday's post to get leads or the Wednesday post to get leads. You might just do another reach more. Okay. But you want to get into the habit of doing at least one lead gen and one get clients post per week. Otherwise, how do you know when enough is enough? You may just stay in this habit forever of saying, well, my audience is big enough because there's always going to be someone that has a bigger audience than you. And so I just wouldn't want someone to, you know, uh, fall into the habit of being in that trap of always saying that I don't have a big enough audience because we have clients that have less than a thousand followers who have very, very large businesses all coming in from their organic social media. And if you're selling like an agency service or, you know, a SaaS subscription type of offer, you don't need hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of clients in order to have a very successful business, especially when it comes to the profit margins that are possible on that type of business model. So anyway, I digress. Let's get into it. So we just went through a few of the ways that this shows up, you know, not having a, enough reach, not getting leads or not making sales and clients from social media. And the reason why that happens is because you're not speaking to one group of people at a time through your content. So if we look back here at the calendar, you can see the posts are specifically targeted on either reaching more people, getting leads or getting clients. The posts don't all try and do the same thing all at once because we look through the lens of the stages of awareness, right? Eugene Schwartz, marketing legend, we want to think through which stage of awareness are we speaking to? Which audience are we talking to at that moment? So to prevent these mistakes from happening, there are three styles of posts inside of our social media sales system. The first style of content is designed to reach more people. So in this content, you're not trying to get leads or make sales. You are literally just trying to reach more people with the lens that they see you as someone who's a credible authority figure in your space. Yesterday, we spoke about the authority intro. We'll get deeper into that today, okay? Now, the second style of content is designed to get more leads. So in this content where you're doing lead gen, just like the one with the, the template that we just went through, you don't expect to get more followers from that. That's not what this type of post is designed to do. This That type of post is designed to get people who already know who you are to raise their hand and say, yes, I'm interested. And they do that through commenting or messaging a keyword. Okay. Now from there, the third type of content is where you put an offer out directly and it's designed to get clients and make sales directly from social media. Now, again, these posts probably won't really get barely any engagement but it turns into cash in the bank, okay? So there's less, you know, conversations that happen from it, but the people that come in, they're coming in with real intent to actually work with you. And you'll see how when I give you the templates that you can start sharing as soon as today. Now, the nice thing is that these three styles of posts work together to create an ecosystem which then indoctrinates new followers and your existing audience and the people who are already ready to buy from you right now. And it ensures that each of them are seeing something from you that's appealing to them and thus turns your social media into a sales system. So here's how we do it. Now you've probably seen this before, very, very simple, but just in case, uh, TOF stands for top of the funnel, MOF stands for middle of the funnel, BOF stands for bottom of the funnel. And so what we'll be doing is we'll be referring to each style of post as top of the funnel, middle of the funnel and bottom of the funnel from this point forth, okay? So just simply put, the top of the funnel posts are designed to reach more people, okay? The middle of the funnel posts, that designed to get more leads. And the bottom of the funnel posts, that's designed to actually convert directly into cash in the bank, revenue clients directly from social media, okay? And remember, in our content, we don't try to speak to two or three groups at one time. Each piece of content, speaks only to one group at a time. So that's really key. So your post is either a top of the funnel post or it's a middle of the funnel post or it's the bottom of the funnel post. Each post has just one purpose. So yeah. does that make sense? I just want to make sure that we're good there. Paulson, go ahead. Absolutely. So uh, I'm going to I'm gonna do a quick pop quiz here for those of you that have that been in marketing for at least 10 years or longer. <laughs> um, I want everyone to type in the word funnel in the comments. Type in the word funnel. I want to first of all know who's engaging because there's like 
this perception of the word funnel, and I want to clarify a couple of things. Um, commonly, we know the word funnel as like a landing page, right? That's which is one part of the actual marketing funnel, right? Funnel in in our world of marketing means <clears throat> narrowing down your traffic with guardrails. That's really what it means, right? Narrowing down your traffic with with guardrails. A landing page is often used as a guardrail, right? Sometimes a certain offer is used as a guardrail. Lauren, can you help us understand the difference between like funnel that you're describing here on traffic management versus like the misunderstood idea of a landing page being a funnel? <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, it's funny because I remember asking someone that and yeah, their answer was just like literally saying that the page was a, was the entire concept of funnel and no i mean yeah this is a big a big misconception actually in the industry i mean ultimately if you think about it anytime you post anything anywhere you're always going to get in front of people that have zero interest intent of ever working with you it's just how the world is i mean if you were to just think about it uh, as a really like old school type of concept but um you know when you have those people that come up to you on the street with like leaflets or something, right? And they're like, or they're like running for a charity, they're trying to generate money for the charity. They come up to you on the street and they talk to like hundreds of people in a day. And then maybe what, 20% of those people actually start a conversation with them and they're just being respectful. And then maybe out of that 20%, you know, again, another small percent, 5% of that 20% are the ones that actually go ahead and donate the money. So all that's happening is you reach a lot of people, you then have some conversations of people that are actually potentially interested. Some of them are just tire kickers. Some of them are just finding out more information. And then finally, there's a small group of people that are ready to actually part ways with their cash. So that's kind of how I always Always look at it and that's why personally I like these three different styles of content because I know with my content that I want to reach more people that yeah a very small percentage of those are going to actually end up buying from me and that's okay because the more people I reach the more people that then slowly stop start to dribble into my middle of the funnel bottom of the funnel and so on and so forth but yeah I mean, you don't even have to have like, <laughs> if you think about a funnel, you don't have to even have any pages. Because if you think about the guys on the street, then they're just doing that all through physical in-person stuff. But obviously, you know, here we're talking about digital marketing. That's kind of uh, where the social media comes into play. And so pages, social media funnels, automations, et cetera, you know, come, uh, is very, very valuable. Um, so that's what we talk about here. So hopefully that answers your question. Love it. Yeah, love it. And I see more people commenting on the words funnel. Yeah, it's. I think it's the most mis misunderstood word in digital marketing. But let's keep going. Let's keep going. Yeah, other than revenue, right? When people say, like, <laughs> they made this revenue when really it was yeah. just, like, potential cash coming in and it wasn't cash collected. But anyway, yeah. different story, different story. So, um, yeah, what you can see here is the proven day-by-day -day social media content schedule. So, um. As I mentioned before, there are two posts each week that are top of the funnel, ensuring that you always reach more people that could do with your help. Okay, again, we're just trying to like increase the size of the net where we reach people so that then there's more people that know who we are with the perception that they like us, okay? Uh, then there are two posts each week that are middle of the funnel, driving people from social media onto your list to ensure that you have owned data, right? We spoke about this again a bit yesterday, but you wanna have owned data because I mean, a couple of weeks ago when Instagram went down, I sent an email to my email list with a headline saying Instagram down question mark. And we got dozens, like uh, maybe even hundreds of people replying to the email, wanting to have a conversation with us about how they could, you know, make sure that they were never in a position again, where they'd be at risk if their Instagram went down, because you need own data, right? I even had uh, someone give me a, a jail threat saying, Lauren, why did you try and take my Instagram account down? Because they thought that I was the one that took the Instagram account down. And now I was just emailing emailing saying uh <laughs> to, to get your instagram account fixed it was quite funny anyway she apologized after when she saw the headlines all over the news saying that instagram went down it was it was pretty funny but i digress um and then yeah we have with them just one post of the week for the bottom of the funnel uh ensuring that you always have an opportunity for people that want to work with you to work with you so again if you have a small audience just swap out one of the lead gen posts for another reach more people post okay so what we want to do is we want to only speak to one out of each of the three groups at a time. And yes, okay, obviously, 
other people will happen to see it. Like if you're speaking to the top of the funnel audience, people that don't know who you are, of course, the middle of the funnel and the bottom of the funnel, people are going to see it. And simultaneously, you know, sometimes your bottom of the funnel content, like a few top of the funnel people, like people that don't know who you are, of course, they'll see it. But the point isn't that. The point is when we write the content, we are just speaking to one person. We are speaking to our most ideal new follower. We are speaking to our most ideal new lead. We are speaking to our most ideal new client. And when you write as though you're speaking to just one person, your content comes out way better, way better, okay? Um, now, let's, uh, let's just, um, I'm, I'm interested, Paulson, like with the audience that you, you're seeing the comments here, are the majority of people like really having a small following right now? Or do they already have a bit of an audience? Like what's the general vibe from today? Yeah, let's, um, let's do this. Let, give us a one in the chat. If you're just starting out and let's say you have less than a thousand followers on all socials combined. Okay. So if you're under a thousand, give us a one in the chat or type in the words under a thousand. Um, and if you have at least a thousand, um, I would say, uh, type in two, type in the word two numbers on a word. So number two and, or to say over a thousand, uh, let's see how many of you are saying one versus two. Yeah. And let's, give it a, that, let's give it a second. Yeah. Yeah. Well, while that comes through, what I'll say is this, as I get into this, I'm about to share a ton of templates for all of these styles of posts. Okay. And then obviously Cam's going to get into the pre-sale process as well. I know we've got a good amount of time together here today. But one thing I will say is that with this system that I'm showing you here, the middle of the funnel and the bottom of the funnel posts that you put on social media can also go to your email list. And the really nice thing then means that you don't need to have a different strategy for all these different platforms. You can have a really simple system where you're just doing five pieces of content a week literally takes less than 45 minutes a week to get this whole thing done and then your social media and email marketing strategy is 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 dialed in and you can focus on other business growth activities so just wanted to share that just because like yeah simply sticking to this as the foundation of your online marketing strategy keeps it so simple and it ensures that you have a steady stream of leads so i just wanted to share that because like it really yeah. doesn't need to take hours and i see some people spending you know more than two hours a week creating content and it just doesn't need to be that way yeah so lauren i got a couple of questions for you i i i don't know if you're gonna share much on this in case so are you gonna talk about the psychology of content like how this should be vulnerable versus like expertise like are we going into that side as well or are you gonna be on essentially the mechanics of the social media machine like what are your uh, what's what's in store for us on content yeah, we're gonna kind of go into both but if i don't go okay. enough into either of them just ask me questions because i can talk about this stuff like in my okay. sleep so <laughs> well you you post a lot i follow you i think since the last uh conference we've had um so so you know ultimately i think people have this misunderstanding that they have to have in this perfect life or some sort of like, you know, a expertise level content that they want to share, which is not true. I often think the vulnerable content or the, or the content that you're sharing in the journey of exploration, Hey, I'm just starting out. Here's what I learned about X, Y, Z. Like, I think the, the journey and the vulnerability works a whole lot better than expertise and luxury and all these different things. Um, Cam and you, you also mentioned it yesterday on the type of different content as well. So I'll, I'll sprinkle in a few things here and there on that. Cause I've seen different patterns, uh, but I'm excited to just kind of get the ball rolling. I see, I see a ton of people that are saying once, um, few people have said they have more than a thousand so far, uh, or they're just in the back of the classroom. They're not commenting. They're going to withdraw where they're going to not comment all the way until the end of the session, but <laughs> let's keep going. All right, cool. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's move on through because, uh, let's talk about how to reach more people. So, um, the goal is when we reach more people that we grow an audience of the right potential clients who see you as an authority. So I'm just going to do a refresher. And by now, you should have had some time to think about this. So I asked this yesterday. And my question is, what is your dream event to speak at? 
if you could go and speak in front of 10,000, 50,000 people, or even just a room, you know, full of 10 people, what's your dream event to speak at? Okay. And then the second question, once you know what that event is, comment what it is, but then how would you like to be introduced at that event? Now, the reason that we ask this question is because now I can bring it full circle for you to, to help understand this even more. The top of the funnel content is where you need to think about you speaking on somebody else's stage. Because top of the funnel, remember, we post top of the funnel content to reach more people. If we're speaking on someone else's stage, that's us speaking in front of people that don't yet know who we are. We're strangers to them. So when strangers on the internet are scrolling, they're just, you know, maybe as Cam said, like they're sat on the toilet or they're in between a meeting or they're just eating their lunch, whatever they're doing, they're scrolling on their Instagram or LinkedIn or Twitter or whatever platform you like. And if they just see you pop up for the first time, they're not following you. They aren't connected with you. They're just seeing your content and they're going to think like, who the hell is this random British girl on my feed that I've never seen before? They're going to be asking themselves that, okay? And so we really need to make sure that in the top of the funnel content, we have to answer the question, why should I listen to you? Because if they see you for the first time, then if you're just, you know, for example, some people flex with like a Lamborghini. Some pe- And so when someone sees them for the first time, then they'll think of you for the future as sort of the Lamborghini person, right? When, if they see you making a post where you're really giving some great value about a specific topic, then they're gonna remember you as the person who gave some great value about that particular topic. If they see you, you know, crying on camera or something like that, Again, maybe they'll think, oh, that person had that bad experience with that thing. So we have to be really careful how we're perceiving, uh, positioning ourselves. Because in order to build an authority brand, we must position ourselves as an authority from the get-go. And that's why when people see you for the first time and they are asking themselves, why should I listen to you? We have to showcase authority. So then the question is, how do we showcase authority? Well, we don't talk at them. We don't tell them what to do instead even you know because because by the way real quick even if your content is great if they don't know why to listen to you they're going to keep scrolling because they've never seen you before okay so to get them to even read the post or to consume the content um what we have found time and time again is that using an authority intro is the way to do that so the authority intro is the way that you'd like to be introduced on stage That needs to be at the top of the funnel post. For example, even today, Paulson said to me like, hey, Lauren, just in case there's anyone here that doesn't know who you are, who are you? And I gave a quick intro, Cam gave a quick quick intro. Because if we're about to start talking all this stuff about social media, and then you go over to my Instagram and I have like two followers and no posts, (laughs) then (laughs) then you're going to be like, why is High Level brought this random person to come and talk about content here, right? You know, so it, it, it helps for us to then be able to explain how we've generated more than a thousand clients at zero cost with this system, how I've personally spoken on the same stages as Gary Vee and Robert Kiyosaki and Alex Hormuzzi. So we share those things, not to brag, but just to make sure that you know that what we're saying, we know what we're talking about, right? So here are some examples. Um, so one could be, you know, so, so, well, my question is, what is like an introduction that if somebody gave it to you, it would get people to listen to you? So for example, One of my clients could say, I've sold 200,000 books that teach how to start an e-commerce business. Or another client could say, I've coached 28 of the top football players in the world. High level could say, you know, how many, I don't know if you guys disclose how many users you have, but you know, however many, we we have however many users uh, running their entire online business on our software. Okay. So just something like that, that just gets people to listen to you. Cause then if you were to do a post, if high level did a post then about software, um, People are going to listen because that's a lot of people. Now, if you're new and if you're just starting out, it could be something about your own personal story, right? Uh, when I first started out, my whole thing that I, I'd i lost like 50 pounds and then I got into health and fitness. That was like, you know, 10 years ago now. And that's how I kind of found myself in the online world. It's been a long time since I was in the fitness industry, but that just gives you some context as to how, you know, you can, you can just get started. Or if you've just worked with one or two clients, you could say about how, you know, you've helped one specific client achieve a specific result. Um, it doesn't have to be anything too crazy, but using an authority intro is like super important to build up your credibility. So people listen to you 
Because all you're trying to do is create like a micro step. We always think about it as micro steps. Like we went through before yesterday. It's not about taking someone from social media and immediately trying to get them to click to a link. It's about getting them from a post to send you either a comment or a message to then have a mini chat in the DMs to then get onto a quick little five to 10 minute call to then get onto a proper sales call to then become your client. Okay, so we're just trying to get like them to take a mini step so that the first mini step is that they see you as an authority and then that makes them want to read the first line of your post or the second line of your post, yeah. third line of your post, follow you. Yeah. And, and the framing is, I like this person and they clearly know their stuff. So Paulson, shall I walk through the system of like what to do once you've got the authority intro down and yeah. how to actually reach people on social media and the post that we can use? Yeah, yeah, we can. And and those of you that are brand new, uh, I would love to just share some notes here as well of how I started off back in the day, even when early 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 days of launching my agency as well. I I borrowed authority, right? I borrowed it from other people. So like, I would like if there's an event in the industry that I am trying to well, when I first started off, I wasn't you know niche down. I didn't know what I was doing, so I'm like serving multiple people. Uh, then I realized, okay, I'm going to go into dentistry or automotive and just kind of pick the lane. So what I would do is like when there is a big event happening or let's say, um, a, you know, something crazy happened in the event, I would express my opinion, right? Like right now, we had solar eclipse yesterday. What is your opinion of the solar eclipse and how everybody's going crazy about it? Because what it does is... You don't necessarily have to have authority. You're borrowing authority from other people or you're leveraging a trendy event that's happening. Or let's say you go to a big conference in the industry and it's like it wasn't a pleasant experience, right? Or maybe it was fantastic. What if you went on your posting and said, hey, I listened in on, um, I don't know, uh, den dent U.S. Dental Conference 2024. Here are my five takeaways. Or I hated this stupid thing that they talked about because it's the worst thing on planet Earth. Like, be completely like protagonist or antagonist and figure out how you want to express your opinion. And you can you can sprinkle in whether you want to be controversial, whether you want to be inspirational. Like you think of people like David Goggins. David Goggins doesn't have controversial opinions. He uses intensity in inspirational way, right? But if I went to, you know, Donald Trump's, you know, content, he uses controversy as a marketing tool. Like it's, there is a lane of canvas everybody uses, and that's kind of where you can kind of choose and decide how you want to launch, right? Borrow authority, read a book about something in the industry and write a review about the book. Like there's so many different ways to get started. Don't let that, don't let lack of authority or lack of followers be the trap that's not going to let you launch let me let me get off my soapbox <laughs> yeah it's kind of like people who say you know yeah I'll, I'll join the gym once i've lost 50 pounds you know what i mean <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense but yeah so um to reach more people we just want to get social and so social is an acronym that stands for stories, observation, contrarian opinions, insight, authority, and listicles. So you actually kind of touched upon the stuff that I'm about to speak about, Paulson. So all right, all right, cool. <laughs> the stage for me there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, um, before though, and I know people are going to be asking, what is a listicle and what is insight? I'm going to talk about it, guys. Don't worry. I got you. I got you. Um, <laughs> but before, before we get there, um, remember this. Top of the funnel content requires you to be seen as an authority and you showcase authority by your authority intro and then by delivering value. Now, value occurs at the point of consumption. Giving free stuff is not value. Value happens when somebody consumes your stuff and then either has an aha moment that shifts their thinking or they implement what you said and then they see results. So there's a massive misconception that value is giving stuff away for free. But if you're giving away a ton of stuff for free and no one's consuming it and having an aha moment that shifts their beliefs or way of seeing things or implementing it and getting results, then it's not, it's it's actually not value. It's just kind of a waste of space. I mean, there's a lot of content right now on the internet. There's even more than can possibly be consumed. I mean, I, I saw some statistic about how many hours of YouTube videos is 
being uploaded every single day and it's some ungodly number of hours so the and especially with ai now i mean content is is i mean just everywhere and um before i speak about that you may be wondering well what's the point of me even doing this and well i'll show you how to actually get to listen to to get reached but a mistake a lot of people make with top of the funnel content is is using ai and i do think ai has a place but i will say in order to build an audience who see you as an authority who then you can have like legit conversations with them they can ask you questions and you can be dynamic and engage with them i strongly recommend that you write this stuff that you're yourself you speak from personal experience you have your own personal opinions etc etc um i think ai has a bit of a way to go and i would just recommend writing it yourself um so i just want to kind of share that because um yeah all right cool so let's talk about these five styles of post so stories okay so if you think about it a lot of stuff goes on in your day to day and a lot of that stuff can be turned into a story that is really, really interesting for people. I mean, something super small could happen in your day and you could use it as an analogy to showcase your expertise in your area. Like literally anything could happen. Let's just say you have a business whereby, I don't know, Paulson, you're good at thinking of like random businesses. So just think <laughs> of a random business for me and like I'll use, I'll, 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 uh, I'll free bullet here with you to give an matter, example. Matter, matter of fact, tell us what industry you're interested in or thinking yeah. about and just jot it down in the comments. We'll come back maybe and just share some ideas around those. So yeah, tell us what industry, if you haven't decided on any specific industry, maybe say something like local or enterprise client. So you at least have a size that you're thinking about of type of clients you want to work with. Um, okay, I see a few already. Um, medical, home services, entertainment, med spas, automotive. Yeah, keep telling us what industry that you're thinking about. Uh, clinics. It's funny how even, even when someone says clinics, it's still pretty broad <laughs> but anyways are they, keep running going. Clinics? are they running clinics are they running the marketing for clinics is it lead gen yeah, is it yeah. sales? like what specifically are you doing you know maybe yeah. that's something else that we should have trained on is like getting them how to <laughs> but like real yeah. real quick like the the tried and tested like way of saying it is i help avatar achieve outcome so if you type it like that it will not only help you position yourself more clearly but it will help us understand what it is that you do for a business so i help avatar achieve outcome so if you guys type it like yeah. that that'll be helpful but yeah and, so like yeah go ahead no no i was gonna say uh, make sure you have numbers on there like don't be generic i help dentists get patients that's not cool you want to say i help orthodontic brand new graduate dentists get at least 15 new Invisalign cases within the first 10 days. Like add numbers to the mix, which creates a whole different positioning versus I just help. I just help everybody. That's not good enough in business. <laughs> keep going, yeah. keep going, Lauren. No, I've definitely made that mistake before back in the day. So uh, yeah, anyway. Um, but no, so, so for example, stories is just essentially taking something that you've learned. So like you want to position it as you being a credible authority figure. So, you know, one of our clients is watching this right now. His name is BG, right? So I'm going to give him a, him as an example because uh, I was on a call with him earlier as well. So I, I know a bit more about his business. So, you know, he could say something along the lines of like, um, I was speaking to the owner of a home repair uh, business earlier today and um I shared these three things with him that are going to triple his new sales over the next five weeks. Something like that, right? And then you just get into the story. So you're just framing a piece of authority and value in a story sense, okay? That would just be how you would do the story piece. You're just taking something that happened and framing it to deliver value, to deliver value points, okay? It's quite simple. Um, the observation would be kind of more like what you were talking about earlier, Paulson, which would be, you know, I've noticed a trend in the industry, in the, in the home repair, uh, industry. And, um, it's something that's causing business owners to stay stark, having to do the work for their clients, you know, yeah. or you could, with the authority, you'd frame it more like I've been in the home repair, uh, business for the last decade yeah. or the last 20 years, right. That would be like a bit of an authority, uh, and having served, you know, 
200 clients, I've noticed a trend, which is whatever, whatever, whatever it is. Okay. Yeah. And I've seen, I've seen on the observations, I've seen people lean into the offer with controversy. Like they would, they would just be like, Facebook ads are the worst thing for a small business owner. Here's the right way to do them. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, well, that you just would be. <laughs> okay, but that would be middle of the funnel content because right gotcha, now we're talking gotcha. about top of the funnel content because okay. what we need to make sure that we do is we need to make sure that we, in the first one or two lines, we are positioning that authority intro in the top of the funnel content. Got That's it. What I mentioned like, you know, I've been in the home repair industry for 20 years or whatever as an example because if we go in talking at people in the top of the funnel content, then that's just going to attract our existing audience that trust us. Whereas if we speak as though we're speaking to someone that does not know who we are, and ultimately we need to portray why gotcha. we know stuff, why they need to listen to us. That's why we use social for top of the funnel content, while also remembering that we're speaking to strangers on the internet who have no idea who we are. So we need to demonstrate our credibility and authority to them. Got it. So you're on stage waiting to be introduced versus you already going into the strategy. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, exactly. cool. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, you know, contrarian opinions, again, you'd have to frame it why you are allowed to have a contrarian opinion. Because if people don't know who you are yet and you're just going on like ranting on the internet, then they might just think that you're a hater. <laughs> so <laughs> instead of saying Facebook ads suck, instead you'd say, I've generated a thousand plus clients online at zero cost. Here's why organic social media is better than paid ads to scaling your home repair business, as an example. So then you'd have a contrarian opinion about that. Or you could say something along the lines of like, I've been in the online coaching industry for more than 10 years now, and I'm noticing a trend and, uh, it's causing a lot of bad people to get into the industry or something like that. Just a contrarian opinion that's going to be polarizing and it's going to upset the people that are not your dream clients. Because then the points that you share in that piece of content are going to be super polarizing. One of the points in that type of content would be like, you know, people are using AI to create online coaching programs now. And that's a really dangerous thing for the industry, et cetera, et cetera. So you just have a polarizing opinions in that post. Uh, insight would then be again, what insight have you learned over the last period of time in the industry, having worked with clients, having been in the trenches, talk about your real world experience. So again, people see that you have authority and credibility. Um, the authority style is where you pretty much just go in with, you know, those kind of ballsy introductions that I mentioned before, like I've sold 200,000 books on the internet about scaling your e-com store to a million per year or just something direct like that. And then you're like, here are the three points. Here are the three three strategies to deploy if you want to do the same thing. Point number one, here's what it is. Point number two, here's what it is. Point number three, here's what it is. That's just the authority style. And then listicle is where you can essentially like hack other people's um, results or success. So you know how the example that we gave yesterday was like, I studied, you know, X number of avatar and here are the things that they all do to be successful. Well, that's what you can also do with a listicle because you can essentially frame it like I studied five of the best books about topic and essentially here's what it taught me. And then you just put a listicle of all the books that you studied and what you took from it. It doesn't have to be a book. It could be all the people that you've studied, all the you know things that you've learned, data points. It could be about tools. It could be about resources. Um, you know, an example uh, that you could do at high level would be like, you know, uh, high level has how many features? I think you guys said yesterday five hundred plus features or something. Um, is it? I don't know what how many it is, but it, it would be like you know, high level has five hundred plus ways to automate your business online. Here are the five most commonly used by uh, businesses that generate a ton of clients online. Feature number one: DM automation. It will save you loads of time because you're going to be able to um, get people directly from social media to become your lead. Feature number two: email automation. Once you get a new lead, you can send them emails automatically. Feature number three. Um, you know, whatever features you want to use, you could just go through like a listicle. And then that's also how you can show that um, your tool has a ton of amazing stuff inside of it. Also, 
a massive, uh, amazing thing that you could do in listicles is you could add like little mini testimonials from your clients in each little point. So basically, you just want to remember for top of the funnel content, get social, because essentially, if you use one of these types of content, this is where you can get a bit more creative and it's less like templatized. Uh, however, you will start to find stuff that just works for you. Um, and you can just keep rinsing and repeating that style of content. So Paulson, do we have any questions about this? Or uh, should I move I think- on? Also, here's an example. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, you know, uh, those of you that may are not just, you know, social media people in general. Um, and some people, you know, they're just like, I just don't do social media. <laughs> like, that's just the thing, right? And if that's you, it's uh, what I'll recommend is take a look at high level social media scheduler slash planner where you can just upload a ton of different things all at once. And then the system just distributes out to across all your channels over time in case if social media is a big heavy lift for you. You can even get somebody else to do that for you. Uh, but we do have tools inside of High Level that makes all these things easier. And then in, in a little bit, Cam's gonna share a lot of the automations behind it as Lauren is kind of laying the foundation of the type of content, just FYI. So stick it out, stay through. There's a lot of content to go through today. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, and uh, obviously, you know, if anyone hasn't already taken advantage of the high level free trial that we've put together for you, then uh, we've got a link there that we can put in the in the chat and everything that you can take advantage of. Um, also, for anyone that ends up signing up with the link of ours, we are also going to give you the entire snapshot, which basically includes the client generating machine. So when it comes to all like the pages and everything uh, that we use to do this, all the automations, the DM automations, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we've set that all up and we're gonna be giving that away for anyone that then becomes a paying user of high level through the free trial link. So I just share that because I realized like two minutes, when I, when I first started on high level, I don't think I knew what the word snapshot meant. And how do you describe snapshot? It's just kind I, of like stuff I that make- we've and put in your account yeah um, i'm not a tech wizard so i have like these like really elementary words and def- definitions so i call it an automation tree that you can plant in multiple accounts or distribute or copy or share or whatever so your automation tree sometimes could be a small little shrub and it could be a big tree or a small little flower or whatever depending on who it is who's building what i mean i've seen some of them that are like two years long versus like a small you know, small one, you know? So, but it basically helps you set up your entire high-level account and all the automations. Um, and it's a one-time build out and you can just download it a few clicks and you have basically Lauren's and Cam's automation in your account just, just by getting the link from them, which is through the, obviously the trial, but yeah. Yeah, we've built like a ton of cool stuff in there, basically the system that we're showing here. And so it just makes it really easy for you to execute it so you don't have to like click the buttons and do it all yourself. So anyways, um, this is just kind of an example because uh, once you start building up your authority, then you may find that the authority style posts do really well. Um, By the way, I'm British. So for me, this is also like really uncomfortable, this kind of authority intro stuff. However, I'm not gonna lie, once I did it the first time, it just really makes it so much easier to generate clients online. And people see you as someone that they trust. Um, You're able to deepen connections. People have interest in what you do. And so I'm sharing this one, even though for me to say it out loud, it feels super freaking awkward, but um, it also allows me to add my own personality, to, which is really an important piece to this. So uh, if we look at this post here, it says, I became a millionaire in my 20s without OnlyFans, daddy's money, or a rich boyfriend. How? These three <laughs> social media steps. So the key thing is as well with the authority style content is like when you're making kind of a bold claim, people are going to start to think, well, clearly, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they'll start making excuses for it, right? So it's really important to then pre-handle and overcome their objections. So for me, it's like, well, it's not daddy's money. It's not a rich boyfriend. I was actually single for years. So um, it's not only fans either. So I use those things because also it kind of, it attracts like the funny type of client for me. So what are those things for you? If you're saying, you know, um, I've scaled, uh, or sorry, I've helped, uh, you know, five dental clinics uh, sell 20 additional Invisalign clients per week. Um, without, you know, what are the things that they don't want to do, right? Without cold calling, 
without, you know, leafleting, without whatever it is, the things that your clients don't want to do, because they're going to start thinking in their head, oh, well, the only way to do it is this. The only way to do it is that. But no, overcome those objections and then you can get straight into the value point. So then it's just like, boom, value point one, value point two, value point three. Um, so I just said a lot when it comes to like the top of the funnel stuff. I'll show you an example um, from one of our clients who said that I can share. Can you see his Instagram here just to be yeah. sure? Yeah. All right. So this guy, basically, he um, he helps athletes become like number one in their country or uh, um, yeah, in their country, right? He's really good at that. He's a mindset coach. So <laughs> this was his first post with this system. And so I also share this because there's a lot of growth that can happen in a very short period of time. I told him, use an authority intro in your content. So he he pretty much did. He went very straight to the point and said, I'm a mindset coach who teaches athletes how to win the big matches and have more fun competing. So I told him, look, here's some feedback. In the future, just delete that first sentence and let's just go straight in with the authority intro, which is, I have helped 20 clients. I, again, he should have said athletes there. I have helped 20 athletes beat number one in the country slash world and win 10 world titles. How? By teaching them these four key skills to bulletproof their performance. So what could it be for you? If you were to fill in the blanks there, what have you done that could be a really good post? Let's workshop this together, okay? So I have helped number of avatar achieve outcome. That's the formula. I have helped number of avatar achieve outcome. Just fill that in. Fill in those blanks. And then the question is how? By teaching them these number of whatever it is in order to whatever they need to do. Okay. So that can just be a very simple framework for you. And then all he did is he just went into the value points. Point number one, point number two, etc. And that's pretty much it. You're just delivering value. Now, if you want, you can also add a call to action. You can see here, if you look at all his comments, you can see lots and lots and lots of comments there. <laughs> um, because he added the call to action like we went through yesterday. But you don't need to do that in this style of post, right? Because remember, we're just trying to really get people to follow. So, Paulson, do you think now's a good time to do any questions or shall I just keep going on? Yeah, so I think, I think one of the things that people don't think about is like whenever you have phone calls or prospecting calls or interaction with clients, you should always survey like what they like and don't like, right? So I would, I would, if I'm on a prospecting call, let's say from Mike's standpoint to talk to an athlete, I would ask the athletes, hey, I know we're on a call about XYZ, but what do you hate about the industry the most? What do you hate about marketing? What do you hate about XYZ? And cons consistently get ideas for content from the avatar themselves because like you're and then one one recent hack i've seen people do is they jump on a zoom and they make sure the ai companion thing is on the yeah. whole time and they generate a lot of new content from just these interaction one-on-one -on -one meetings as well so there's not a you know there's so many ways to do this um but um does anybody have any questions so far on the principles of content lauren has shared so far we talked about stories observation contrarian opinions inside authority as well as listicles and maybe there's a couple of more that you may sprinkle in but either way any any questions anybody have in here so far before we go into automations yeah listen before you uh before we do that i will say one thing okay so again i want to just go back to the segmentation of the content here because when it comes to taking problems that you're hearing your prospects here in sales and bringing that into your content, that's what we do in the middle of the funnel content. Okay, so where we're trying to convert leads. So for your point here, using um, prospects problems on sales calls in top of the funnel content, it can be okay for it can be okay for getting ideas. Okay, I will say that, but for actually leveraging that to the maximum, we actually don't want to. We don't want. We want to save that stuff. We don't want to use that in our top of the funnel. Top of the funnel, if we stick to social, the goal is to reach more people. And then the magic happens when we take those pains and those problems that we hear in sales and we put that in the middle of the funnel. Because gotcha. remember, we're only speaking to one group of people at once. So this is, this is, I'm really glad you brought that up because when we start blending things together, 
that's where we don't get as much reach as possible because simply by talking to the pain points and problems that we hear in sales, if we put that in our top of the funnel content, what's going to happen is we're really going to narrow the number of people that see the stuff. Because remember, even if they talk a lot of the best clients that you're ever going to have, they don't even know about their problems yet. They're mm. not actually problem aware. So top of the funnel content typically speaks about more broad topics. That's why we use things like stories, observation, contrarian opinion, insight, um, our authority positioning, and also the listicles, because it captures them. It's like a more wide net. Whereas mm. then those who are already problem aware, that's why in the middle of the funnel content, we speak to the problem aware people because the top of the funnel people, the strangers, they may not yet know that they have the problem. That's why you haven't oh, yet okay. appeared in the world before. So I just wanted to bring that up because yeah. your point is really amazing. However, it should be saved for the middle of the funnel stuff. Does and this is sense? the second This is the second time I made that mistake. So if I made this mistake in thinking about the content strategy, you all should probably write this down and think through of like, okay, here's what I'm going to be shooting out for top of the funnel. Um, but this is this is good because I, I think this is the second time I did that. <laughs> yeah, well, no, okay. I, I, I hope that you don't mind me putting you on the spot like that. But the, no, no, the no, only... I love it. I love it. <laughs> okay, good. Because, yeah, it, it just makes such a big difference when you can see everything and you, in segmentation. So literally, like if you were to think about speaking to someone that doesn't know who you are right now and that doesn't know like too much about the solutions that exist for their problem, and maybe they don't even yet know that they have a problem, you're kind of educating them on why their problem's a problem, essentially. So that yes. then you can bring them into your world. And then the middle of the funnel, obviously, is where you speak directly to problems and yeah. speak directly to more, you know, problem aware prospects. Bottom of the funnel is where you just go ahead and make offers. But we're going to get into the middle of the funnel and the bottom of the funnel stuff in a sec. But just to break up me speaking, because I've been speaking a lot, Cam, are you cool if I <laughs> hand over to you? <laughs> Yeah, of course. I think it, it, it fits with what I'm going to share kind of fits with this because um, what I want to go through now is the kind of the machine part of that's needed before we go into the next step with Lauren's middle and bottom of funnel. So as we talked about yesterday, um, with the content, the way that we drive traffic to the machine is through largely the DMs. So we use the comments and we use the DM function on uh, Instagram and using high level to drive people into Messenger. What I wanna walk you through now is how we then leverage the automations from those conversations to pre-sell people before they even get onto the, uh, the phone with us to be able to sell our services because the warmer they can be or the more touch points that someone can have before speaking to you, whether it's on the phone um, or Zoom, however you do it, the more likely they are to, to uh, convert into a client. I think there's a, you know, most people say it's like seven hours or something, but this is where having lots of different styles of content and people are constantly consuming from you. Um, these are all little touch points that move towards that uh, process. So I'm just going to share my screen. Let me do this. Can you guys see this? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sure. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So the process that I want to walk you through is from the conversation. Once you've had that, you've, you've done the socials, you've started the conversation, you've used the automation that we went through yesterday to start that conversation and continue it. Um, and then you've sent them a link to book in this 10, 15 minute call. So I want to walk you through the sort of technical side of that, what it looks like and how we're ultimately setting it up. So just to give you a view as to what the page looks like, it's a very simple page. Obviously we want to move people through the steps. So we're not giving them loads and loads of information because you've done a certain level of the pre-sell already via chat. Now on this page, the one thing that I will say is we do do a little bit more qualification on the um, question. It's not on this calendar because it's the new one. Let me just pull up the uh, the official calendar. Um, but this gives us the ability to just reaffirm that we're speaking to the right kinds of people. We ask just a couple of questions just to make sure that they are um, 
make yeah, sure looks, that they're the right people and we're not wasting our time basically it lo looks like uh, lauren dropped the link in the zoom chat for everyone cam if you want to pull it oh sorry oh, i meant okay. to wait one second The whole world knows <laughs> your calendar link now. <laughs> um, so, but this is so this is this is the uh, calendar that we use, and we have just a series of questions, and these will change based off of who your target market is. Obviously, these questions are very tailored towards uh, what we do, and to get our ideal clients to sort of step up and say, "This is us," and we can then filter based off of this. It also gives a bit of context when you go into the call, especially if you're, depending on what level you're at, if you've got multiple people sort of having the conversations and then taking the calls, it just gives that context all the way through and, you know, there's less disjointedness with it. So we ask simple questions just to get them to confirm that, you know, they are our ICP or ideal client. Um, and then we get a bit of data. So... What are your goals? Where do you want to go? Um, what's the biggest problem? Where are you currently kind of thing? And then what's your main social media? And then it's just your normal form. The way we set this up, obviously in go high level, we create a custom uh, before, form. Before you go into setting it up, Cam, um, yep. do you, just a quick question, and I'm sorry to interrupt you there. No, if, if, if you're starting out, I I am in on the side of, having the least amount of questions so you take the most amount of calls to kind of prime your own skills up um do you feel that's true for somebody starting out versus somebody who's advanced and they don't have time to waste time on a call like you go with more questions and like you know a 50 a 50 layer page so they don't they're super qualified what are your thoughts on that yeah i i would agree i would have the the basic amount of questions i think the 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 core ones that you kind of want to have are going to be, is this person ICP, which they should be. And it's a very easy, you know, it's just a checkbox anyway, because you've already had the conversation. So some of these questions may already have been answered in the conversation. Um, and then where you are now and where you want to be. I think those are kind of like the basic questions that I would start with just to give you a jumping off point when you have the conversation. Um, you can go with less, but it gives you, you have to do a bit more in the conversation phase. Whereas if you've already got that information, it kind of just gives a bit more context for the call. So the sales call then becomes easier if you have it. Um, and then obviously as you get more and more and you have more volume, you, you add additional friction. Does that make sense? Absolutely. That makes total sense because you still have to have some sort of a framework to talk about. So I think this gives you uh, a, a launch pad of some kind to just get going. Yeah, for sure. It so, also just you don't totally waste your time <laughs> because <laughs> if, yeah. if someone books a call with you, right, I'll give you an example. Like for us, right, we do not ever by any means help people sell more physical products. We, it's just not an area of the business that we have. Um, it's not something that we have expertise on. Is it something that in the future we may consider adding? We would have to add an entire department to be able to teach that and help install systems for that because we just don't have the, that set up. And so if someone comes in and they are saying, yeah, I really want to uh, sell more physical products on the internet and like these are $50, like, I don't know, shoes or whatever, well, we're just going to cancel the call. And we're going to say, hey, like, respects, like, have a chat with one of our clients. He's really good at helping you sell more physical products because we don't know how to help with that. <laughs> so I just give that context just because, like, if you start getting a ton of people coming in and they're booking a call about a specific thing, then you need to look at the messaging and the targeting and the content that you're posting because it's curious to wonder why are people all like this coming in when this isn't who we help and it helps you understand that like the messaging in your actual content needs to change so we always analyze it as in like are we actually bringing in people who want the outcome that we offer who are the icp and the ideal client that we uh serve and in a moment i'll also share the framework that we look at when it comes to qualifying prospects to make sure that you are speaking to the right people and and qualifying them properly um so yeah just wanted to add that context because um 
it can be really tough when you don't have a big team and you do have to kind of be more specific with who you're speaking to. But at the same time, you don't want to like narrow the scope so much that you never have any opportunity. So finding that balance is really key. So I would just encourage everyone watching to ask yourself, what are the common traits of your top 50% of clients? Like what do all of them have in common? Because then if you can disqualify the things that are not that, then you can put yourself in a you know position to be more successful in the long term. Love that. So what we're looking at actually building out looks like this. So I'll just walk through the automation and then I'll show how to actually build it with the, the various steps. Uh, because this is what does a lot of the heavy lifting for the sales or the pre-selling before we get onto that 15 minute call. As I said, there are a lot, like the more that they can consume and we're what one thing we don't do is make the assumption that someone is consuming everything here. The reason there is a number of touch points is because most people are busy and they won't do all of it. Some people will go through everything and they'll get on the call and they will, you know, say, I watched this video, this video, I watched your YouTube channel, everything. But then you have other people that are really busy and they book a call for tomorrow morning. Uh, and so you've got, 12 hours and they manage to just watch one video or read one email. So it gives us as many touch points as possible without going sort of over the top. So the, I love it. do you mind zooming in on the bottom left there? Maybe yep. go to 120. Oh, okay. Perfect. Yep. yep. Cool. So the trigger is the, is the, uh, the calendar. So this is obviously once they've booked in through this page, they fill out their info and then that triggers this automation. We then tag them with the booked impact call tag. This obviously just makes sure that um, we can track them and we can add them to various lists or follow-ups, et cetera. We then create the opportunity on our pipeline so we can visually see where people are, how many calls we've got booked in, all those kind of um, things for the sales team. And then we start with the first email. So let me move everyone's face. And, and Kim, this is for the top of the funnel. So this is more so for the middle of funnel and bottom of funnel, but Got it. Okay. I'm just walking through it now because one, we obviously wanted to, to break things up, but also to show what we want to have in place so that when we do what Lauren's about to share with the middle and bottom of funnel, we have it, you know, driving ready to go. Okay, cool. So you're inside of high level now in the workflows, building out automations for essentially the whole journey that your prospects will go through that came from social media content. Yeah. Yeah. So we went through the top of funnel. Yeah. Oh, sorry. The, the DM side yesterday. Um, so obviously if you didn't catch that, you can watch the replay and walk through that process. And then this is from the call booking section. Once they book the call, this is everything that they get. So the first email, um, obviously you'll get all of these email templates and things if you you get the snapshot, uh, just confirming the call. And the first one is making sure that they've replied to the SMS. So you'll see here, we wait one minute and we send them a text message. Um, but in the email, we get them to confirm the call by replying to the SMS. That gives us another medium in which we can communicate with people because if we can contact them by email, SMS, and on Instagram. It's just multiple touch points, which is, again, a good uh, good practice. Then step two is to watch this short video. So we just have a short video kind of covering what we're going to talk about on the call. Like, here's what we're going to go through. We're going to look at your business. We're going to um, review it, and then we're going to give you some actionable steps on what the next steps are or what, what you can do to improve it make more sales from social media, et cetera. Um, and that's pretty much it. So very straightforward, very simple actions. It takes them a grand total of eight minutes if they watch the video. Um, uh, but the more important thing is to get them to confirm that call. So it's it's just getting them to take baby steps towards like, what are they saying yes to? How are we moving them along the funnel? Yeah, and, and those of you that are watching, you, you don't need to rapid fire on the screenshots or anything. You, you're you going to get the snapshots and instructions and all of that. So uh, and if you're an existing customer, you'll get these uh, probably uh, after day three. It will make it available to you and everything. Um, Cam, I got a question for you. What does the video say in the funnel? 
what is that video about? I so can... that video, do you want to go through that, Laura? Yeah, so just to confirm, uh, there's two videos. There's a video on the page, which is inviting them to schedule a call. And then there's a video on the thank you page, like telling them your call is confirmed. Um, if you want, I can give the scripts. I just don't know how we can get that across. Uh, or I can try and explain it now. Or if you, we could potentially even, you know, allocate some time to it tomorrow, what would be best? Um, I mean, if you want to just give a quick snippet overview of the spirit of what these videos do, like is one just qualifying them and setting the stage for the call? I mean, something uh, basic would be perfect. If you want to go into it, maybe tomorrow we can share notes on it in further detail. Yeah, so essentially like the first video on the landing page where the calendar scheduler is, it's literally just saying like, hey, let's I'll invite you to, you know, come to have a quick 10 minute brainstorm call where we'll look at this this and this so whatever the three things are that people usually struggle with so for us it's your leads um how you get clients on social media uh, and your social media itself and then ultimately we'll be able to have a brainstorm to see if and how our system could help you and if it we can then we'll schedule another time to chat in more depth and if not we'll make sure that you walk away with some free resources to help you um so all we're doing on this video is we're selling this quick 10 minute call like that's the whole point is like we're selling the idea book a 10 minute call with us so we're essentially helping them understand what they'll get out of it um which really the essence is they're going to walk away with like a ton of clarity on how they can leverage social media to drive clients for that business like that's what we're saying so for you what would it be if they get on a 10 minute call with you what will they walk away with and um on that 10 minute call, we're basically just giving them, we're, we're qualifying them to see, um, do they have a problem that we can solve? Who is everybody involved in their business? How do they define results? Are they even a fit? Like, do they have a business model that we can help with? Um, uh, what evidence have they seen so that they, that we know that they're a good fit and that they, they know that they trust us? Uh, how committed are they to their results? And then like, how soon do they want to get results? So we have a framework which is perfect, P-E-R-F-E-C-T. I'll get into that in a sec. But that's essentially like on the call itself what we do. But yeah, on this page, the video is pretty much just like selling, hey, book the call. And then on the next video, once they book the call, it's pretty strict. Um, we're literally telling them like, we, we ex you know, given that you've scheduled a call with us, we know that you're a business owner that values your time. Um, so we expect that you're going to show up on time. You're going to be a quiet environment. You know, you're going to be, uh, you know, basically we have like a 92% show up rate on this when a lot of people have like less than 20% show ups on, on discovery calls. So the reason being is because our call, our video is very strict and we make it very clear, like, you know, let's get real or let's not play, you know? Um, so we get them to show up, we get them pre-framed, we make sure that they know the value that's gonna happen in the school. And it's ultimately just very to the point and pretty much like in so few words, like don't waste our time and you book the call, so show up and engage. <laughs> so uh, then we also manually, every time somebody books a call, we have like a, an automation set up so that somebody from our team gets notified. So as soon as the call is booked, they'll phone them up and confirm to make sure that they'll show up. Yeah. You know, what's funny is in the beginning stages, you typically don't develop the confidence to be able to say, no, I don't want to talk to everybody. So usually on these funnels yeah. and systems and landing pages, the energy usually transfers that you're willing to take anybody's call. Like even, even on the calendars, I usually just cut off most of the hours and just have two slots, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. Like you, even if I've got nothing on my calendar, my landing pages will not have slots available because my the perception that I want to give is that I don't have time to just waste, right? So so it's interesting how that confidence develops over time. But then you go you have to go through a couple of hundred calls that you wasted. Then you're like, okay, I don't want to waste any more time either. So then you're like, okay, I gotta have something. Uh, but this is great. This is great. So first video is more of a overview of what they can expect. Second call is setting the stage of what how they should behave on the call and you and you know actually have a little bit more tension built by design to make sure they're not wasting your time or vice versa maybe they're not qualified you know yep okay. all right cool so let's go back into the automations cam so cool. 
Um, what are we looking at here? We've got so, emails going out, text messages going out, a couple of wait steps. Yeah, so it's a pretty straightforward automation. It's just uh, the the SMS is getting them to confirm, as we said, um, reply back, let us know that you got this. Um, then six hours later, we have another message that sends them a couple of case studies. So we basically, because we target a certain um, client profile, we know the case studies that usually resonate. So you can obviously build this out uh, specifically with case studies that are relevant to your clients. Uh, but this is a good chance for you to sort of highlight the best results that you've got, whether that's for clients or in your own business. Um, you can put that in here. Um, and then it's kind of just pre-framing what they're going to talk about. And it kind of is saying the guys that you've just watched on these case studies started with this call as well. So make sure you turn up, you pay attention, and you're kind of like seeding the idea that these opportunities are available to you um, or look, see what's possible if you have the right systems in place. And then it goes down into it, just a standard uh, show up sequence. So 24 hours before the call, it's just a reminder. Um, here's when your appointment is. I'll give you a call on the phone and um, a relink to that video, the confirmation video. And then an hour before the call, they get another email with a very similar, just make sure you show up for the call. Um, we're gonna call you on the phone and then an SMS reminder an hour before. One thing that we found with these, the reason we do these 15 minute calls on the phone is because like a Zoom call is quite a commitment. So as I said earlier, we, we're looking at getting people to take small steps towards our big outcome. If we can break that down into smaller steps, it's easier for them to take the next phase answering the phone is a much less commitment than getting on camera like this. You know, as you can probably tell, I had to do my hair, my makeup. <laughs> you know, um, I cannot, I cannot wait for the day. Uh, I don't mean to prophesy here of any kind. I cannot wait for the day you can log into high level and launch a FaceTime call. <laughs> I cannot wait for that day. I don't know. If, I don't, I'm just, I'm just imagining things in my head. Don't worry. Don't ask any of the developers if we're doing something. But the phone calls, to me, it's efficient. But uh, to me, being face-to-face -face or FaceTime or even Zoom creates a good interaction. So I think it also depends on your price points. You know, if you're selling something for 10K, you're probably not going to want to do a phone call uh, as your main, main so, initial. Unless you're having an appointment set or requalifying them. Yeah, so, so the way that we do it is... The, the this phone call the fifth the 10 15 minute brainstorm is a phone call because it is that lower barrier to entry we then book them in for a strategy session which is that full 45 60 minute and that is a zoom call so you get that build up and you get that personal touch on the second call much more so and um, but this is just like we we do this in b2b with like big enterprise companies as well so it, it works no matter who you're selling to but being able to just do it, and it comes down to as well, like people are busy. If you're having a 15 minute call, you might put it in your lunch break. So you might be out the office or whatever it is. So it's just much more efficient than having to log on to Zoom and be on camera and that kind of thing. And then when you book them in for the 45 minutes, it's a much, uh, that is like sit down, let's really focus. That's kind of the you know, deeper dive. So, so I have a question for you guys. When, when, so do you, Lauren, actually take these calls yourself, like the 10 minute ones, or do you have an appointment setter? I assume you probably have no calls. It's probably appointment setter and a closer or, you know, or is that the case? And if so, what did you do in the beginning? Cause I assume that's not what you started off with. Yeah. I mean, like I've taken 10, like I, I would honestly say more than I don't, I, okay, for at least more than 5,000 for sure. Sales calls, like for sure, for sure. Um, no, now I don't take them. I, I have recently just for fun and just because yeah. sometimes I like to do things just to make sure the system's solid. Um, yeah. But no, we have a, a team who uh, take the the impact calls and then we have a team who take the sales calls. Um, 
personally, as much as I loved doing them back then, uh, I feel like I put in my reps, you know, and so <laughs> now course, I, I, course, I just yeah. couldn't take as many as we have on the calendar. Like it, it just isn't physically possible for me to do that. Like oftentimes our team is having 20 plus of these each per day. Um, and it's just not manageable, obviously, for me. So as much as I'd love to, no, uh, I'm no longer in the SDR role. Uh, and also, like for an SDR role, you can hire really great people for, you know, a baseline commission of like 1.5K per month and then a certain dollar value per deal that closes. So um, it's not also a role that is necessarily like hugely expensive, which is why, you know, I like having a, a, a nice, you know, some great yeah. SDR, like some setters on the team. Um, and then, yeah, on my side, uh, I'm just in the video uh, inviting them to schedule the call. Got and it. then the confirmation video after someone scheduled a call, that would be the setter. So then yeah. we have it set up. So whichever setter the call is going to is the one in the video. Also, what I did do, just because like I know people are going to ask for the script, I have just made a, a post with the script for the video oh. um, like the, the, the video confirmation script. So the video script is there. You guys can have that um because i'm not i just i'm worried that we won't have time to go through it all so i can share that there and then maybe perfect uh, I can give it to you guys and you can like send it in an email to everybody or something i don't know yeah we'll we'll have a dedicated google drive for this okay. workshop that everybody will have access to after with all the collaterals that's how we do all the events okay perfect cool. okay. so there we go perfect. um and with regards to yeah, the rest of this, like the reason I wanted to share this part is just because this process here is like very specifically set up to decrease people that are going to waste your time, to increase show ups, and also to ensure that there's trust built up prior to people actually getting on that call with you. So the way that the automations are built out, the way the pages are, the way the scripts even are, is like very specifically designed to make sure that by the time that you're speaking with people on the phone, um, they're pre-sold and they really want to actually collaborate with you and they have the buying intent in their mind. So just wanted to share that. So I, have a, I have a quick clarity question for you, Lauren. So regardless of where the traffic is coming from with respect to top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, or bottom of the funnel, everybody is going through this assembly line of automations that you just showed, right? Yeah, so essentially like the impact call is the, shall we call it the hub? So whether people are coming in, so what you'll find with the top of the funnel content, right, is people will land on your profile. And so let's just say like somebody sees one of my Instagram posts for the first time. Now they really like it and they see, oh, okay, this girl, like I like her stuff and she knows what she's talking about in this area. So like, let me check out her profile. They'll start scrolling and they'll see another post and they'll get some more time with consuming my stuff and they'll see maybe they land on a middle of the funnel post and it says like, you know, comment the word leads or whatever. So they comment the word leads on one of my posts, my automation fires, they get a DM from me and then suddenly they're inside of my DMs. And so then from there with the automations that we showed yesterday that we have in high level, now they're inside of our system. So whether we ask for their email there and they don't send it, they ghost and then we ask for it from them later and then we send them the link to the page. Whether we get their email in the DMs or we send them the link to the page, we're gonna get their email somehow. Now, after they opt into any of our funnels, this is what we'll speak a bit more about tomorrow, but once we have the impact call system set up, the impact call system is such a powerful asset because you can bolt it onto any funnel. So imagine having a system that always qualifies potential clients that you can then literally bolt onto any of the freebies that you ever give away or anything that you ever do is just so powerful because whenever somebody opts into like let's say you had like a free lead magnet a pdf or whatever right you're giving away a free report someone puts their name email phone number boom thank you page hey just wait 10 minutes before we uh but before that's had time to get to your email inbox just uh, wanted to say you're probably here because you're looking to get more leads, clients, or profits from social media. So I'd like to invite you to schedule a quick 10-minute brainstorm call. And it's just the same video as the other one. Same video. You just add a quick intro at the beginning that says, hey, just 10 minutes. Uh, that's going to be in your email inbox in just 5 to 10 minutes. But just while you're here, you're probably trying to get more leads, clients, and, and then you get into the same script. So it. it just holds on. So yeah, basically, we optimize impact calls now in the past we used to sell i'll just be 100 percent honest right now we've sold up to 100k deals inside of the dm why do we stop doing that complexity 
there's just so many DM conversations going on all the time. Like I was just talking, to, I mentioned earlier, my client, Rachel, and she has uh, one post. She just started using one of the posts that we went that we went through yesterday, that same post. She has more than 350 comments on that post. Okay. And so then she was trying to manage all these DM conversations, but you just can't manage that many DM conversations. Like you just, it's just too hard. So even though when you're using high level with all the tagging, the pipelines, et cetera, if someone replies one message and then you have to reply back to it, that's like really complicated. Whereas if you just get them on a 10 minute call, you do all the qualifying in 10 minutes, boom, it's done. And then you can either qualify or disqualify them. So I just shared yeah. that because it's just such a really, it's a low um, friction method. And also you don't get ghosted, you know, you have their, their attention right there. And then, you know, if they are qualified, there's someone worth following up with, which we'll be talking about the hit list and stuff tomorrow so that you know how to keep following up with these leads. Yeah. And, and then naturally you develop sales skills on a call versus DMs anyway. So if you're starting out, you want to jump on as many calls as you possibly can, whether it's, if it's not perfect, it's totally fine. Just keep the repetition because you know, after you do these calls for a few months, all of a sudden in one weekend, you're going to close like a bunch of deals and you're going to wonder, oh, I don't know what happened. It's typically because you've developed your energy and tonality and confidence about the offer and that takes repetition. And then the other is there's a sales cycle that's active across all these pipelines that you're kind of brewing up. So either way, um, I, I'm loving so far everything that you guys are sharing what else do we need to learn about items on day two okay cam are you good or or shall i proceed okay just wanted to make sure all right cool so um let's do this then so we've actually only right now been through the top of the funnel we actually have quite a lot to still get through so yep. um let's let's get let's get straight through it so yeah top of the funnel is there to reach more people and ensure that you're no longer unknown all right so then if we next want to think about middle of the funnel, however, that one's there to get more leads. So who wants more leads? Let's get this energy back up, you know, type leads into the chat if you want to get more leads. Let's see who wants more leads. <laughs> just to give some more context while while you guys are typing that in. Um, we just went through like the impact cool system just so that you have some context on why we're doing all of this, okay? Why are we trying to do all this social media stuff? Well, we're trying to do it to get people to raise their hand so that then those people get an automated DM so that then they get sent the freebie or the three value points that we went through yesterday and then you start the conversation with them and then once they once you have a tiny bit of information, maybe they say that they have a problem that you can solve and that they have the business model or they're the type of person that you can serve, so usually you want to know that they are, they have a problem and that they, that they're a fit for you. Then, okay, now you use the magic line. Okay. I'll share the magic line. The magic line is, ah, seems like we found each other at a great time then. Uh, what if I, sorry, this is what I do all day, every day. So how about you drop me two times you're available today or tomorrow, and I'll give you a quick 10 minute call to brainstorm to see if and how I can help. Then they'll drop you two times and then. Either you manually schedule it or you say, actually, you know what? Probably easier if just because of the time zones. Um, and so I can stay organized. If you just grab a time on this link, you send the link to them, they book, and then boom, then you jump, jump on the call with them. Okay. So anyway, that's why we went through that. So if we now then go back to the schedule, there are two days a week where we get more leads, right? So at the beginning of this workshop, you posted with one of the templates. I'd be curious to know, actually, uh, who's already getting people raising their hand from that post? I'd be curious to know. Let us know. And remember, this social media schedule is scientifically created to move people towards becoming your client. And we want to indoctrinate your leads and ensure that you're building up so much trust that people can't help but want to work with you organically without you needing to always, you know, be trying to pitch or trying like weird trends to go viral or crying on camera and all this stuff. <laughs> That's like kind of interesting because um, in your middle of the funnel content, the content that is there to get leads, you're speaking to people as though they already know, like, and trust you. So Paulson, this is what you spoke about a bit ago. So um, in the middle of the funnel content, you don't need an authority intro, right? We only use an authority intro and top of the funnel content because top of the funnel, remember these people are strangers to you. They don't know who you are. So they're thinking, who is this person and why should I listen to them? Whereas middle of the funnel content, 
people already follow you. They already know who you are. So instead, for the middle of the funnel posts, what you do is you take the problems that you hear in sales. This is really, really important because when you keep track of the problems that you hear in sales conversations on a pain list, then you have a never-ending stream of content ideas to pull from. Paulson, just as you said, right? So we literally have a spreadsheet of problems that prospects are telling us that they have, and then forever we have content to speak about. And then what you do is in your middle of the funnel content, you showcase how your systems and processes overcome those problems, okay? Or you just do a direct freebie giveaway. We did the direct freebie giveaway at the beginning. So we're not gonna speak too much about that one because it literally just is what it is. It's just a freebie giveaway. Um, so the reason why this works so well is because then you're speaking to the pain points and problems that prospects are telling you that they have. And then what happens is other people just like them resonate with your content about those challenges, allowing you to pull in a never ending stream of leads with your middle of the funnel posts, all right? Um, so let's look, uh, let's look at an example because what you do in the middle of the funnel post, you essentially just, uh, let me show you this. I'll show you an example from one of our clients because she executed it really well. This is the first time that she did it and we can essentially templatize what she did. So by the way, she also has less than 5,000 followers on Facebook and she'd never used her Facebook before to get business. So wow. this was the first time she'd ever done it. She didn't even know that she had people on her friends list that would have been interested in her offer. But she's like pretty gutsy, so she just went for it. Um, and she's also a lawyer. So, you know, she was a uh, not necessarily the social media type before. But yeah, she just went for it. And you can see there were 69 comments uh, on this post. So what Audrey did is she took a problem that she always hears her prospects having. So... Uh, they help people set up like foundations. So the problem was this, you know, a small business owner paid a hundred grand in taxes. The next year she received a four grand tax refund legally. Here's how she went from paying more than her fair share to keeping more of what, what she had. Earned. So she literally took the problem, which is paying too much in taxes. And then she wrote some value points, which is literally what her offer does, showing how to overcome that problem. And then she got people to comment the word, well, the phrase tax reduction in order to learn more. And it was crazy. She packs, she, she doesn't normally take sales calls, but she had to take three days straight of sales calls because she got so many sales calls booked from this one post. Wow. Talk yeah. about creating a problem so you can solve it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So my question really is this, like, What's the problem and how do you solve it? It's very simple and you could think about any of your clients and you would just fill in the blanks like this. A avatar problem. <laughs> and then the next year, the next month, the next week, three months later, they outcome. Here's how. And then obviously you talk about how you help them do it. That's a beautiful thing. And it has authority baked into it. And it seems kind of rhythmic, right? So you know that these posts are going out a certain day of the week, so you can expect uh, a higher volume of potential prospecting impact calls, maybe, I don't know, Wednesday and Saturdays. Like you can kind of see like a predictable rhythm. Is that a fair assumption? Totally. The reason why we like doing Mondays reach more people, Tuesdays, Wednesdays get more leads um, is because then that means that throughout the rest of the week, you can be working those leads and then setting them to ideally have the impact calls that week so that then the sales calls with those leads will happen the following week, which allows the prospect to have some time to consume some testimonials between like Thursday and Monday when their sales call is. Got That's it. why we do it like that, yeah. Got it, cool, all right. So yeah, this is really just, a, you know, on if you're posting this every single Wednesday or every single Tuesday, I mean, there's no way that you can't get leads over time. There, there just isn't. Just stick to it and test different problems. Now, Audrey has also tested this exact same post, but instead of saying a small business owner paid 100 grand in taxes, she said a small business owner received a $4,000 tax refund. The year before, she paid 100 grand in taxes. So she's taken the exact same post. She just flipped those first two lines because she wants to test which one's performing better. And she's also yeah. running ads to this as well now because it works so well. So once you find something that works, you just keep using it. Luckily for her, 
straight out the gate it worked but it may not be like that for you right i've tested different angles and it's flopped for literally weeks until finally i find one way of saying the thing that i wanted to say i mean cam knows how frustrated i get when this happens but it's just part of it right because like i think i've sometimes written a really good piece of content when i'm testing something new but unfortunately sometimes it doesn't work then if i go back to one of these templates this templates that i've been using for years it just works so I'm also still testing new things to try and innovate and try and improve, but sometimes it doesn't work and that's okay. And I'm sharing the templates that do work with you so that you can start driving revenue for your business. Um, because like once you start having, you know, it's really cool as well. Cause once you start having, you know, consistent leads, you really get to make the most of the other features that high level offers. Cause when you have tons of leads coming in all the time, I'm telling you, like if you have a post like this and you don't have the DM automation set up, you're going to drive yourself crazy. Like Rachel, I told you, <laughs> she, no, she literally made a post in the group saying, help, I need help from someone to help me try to hire a virtual assistant who can help me with high level because I need to set up these automations more quickly. So luckily we had the snapshot for her. She just hadn't used it. But um, I share that context just because like, you know, you will regret not using high levels features um, when a post does finally hit. And with the algorithm, sometimes things can suddenly hit. And so you want to be prepared. Okay. I have a quick question for you. Uh, and I know we kind of uh, touched on it yesterday. Um, yeah. It, does this work better with personal profiles versus business pages? I, I'm sure that's a common question you get over the years. Um, and I, I'm like, my thought is post on both. Why are you, why are you even trying to pick one? <laughs> yeah. So like, for example, uh, I don't know if you know founder, uh, the company yeah. founder. Yeah. Yeah. Nathan, yeah. Yeah. Nathan, so, yeah. yeah. For example. Yeah. So I, I'm working with Nathan actually himself to like, increase his sales through the DMs and stuff. Actually, yeah, I forgot you guys are doing a collab with him. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, but it's really interesting. Oh. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> no, Nathan's cool. Like... We're we're working with him on some cool projects. But yeah, uh, we're 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 gonna I think we're gonna do some event or something with them and as a surprise, but but it's oh okay. yeah, that was a great surprise. <laughs> Whoops, okay. Oh my gosh. I just suddenly forgot we're live in front of like thousands of people. But that's okay. Um <laughs> sorry. Uh but yeah, like with regards to uh for example, him, you know, what's really interesting is that the founder account gets so many DMs, like crazy volume. But what's interesting is that the conversions happen more on his personal page. Yeah. So it's just like again, top of the funnel. His company page is the one that has the credibility, but then for the for, for the middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel, for him himself, his page. So we're just kind of working on that at the moment, looking into it. But I will say like my personal expertise is more in the personal brand side of things. Uh, when it comes to the business stuff, I mean, it does work and some of our clients use that, but that's only because they already had some following on their company profiles. Like I have one client his name's Nick and he's got like a functional neuro health business and his business Instagram already had 30,000 followers when he started using the system. So it worked. Now, if he was trying to get it going from scratch, I, I mean, I think, it, I think it could work. It's just, I don't have the, 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 the visibility over that because I just don't seem to tend to attract a lot of people who are trying to grow company pages. So if I'm honest, I'm probably not the best person to ask. Sure. Okay. Let's keep going. All right, cool. Let's do it. So, um, Cam, if we look at the hit list, or shall we do that tomorrow? I'm just conscious of the time. Um, let's see. Uh, twelve. Let's keep going. Let's keep going because what I don't okay. want to do is get to tomorrow and feel like there's so much more to share tomorrow. <laughs> I'd rather have a heavier call today if you're if you're okay with it. And then what we'll do today is we'll skip the Q&A and we'll do a bigger Q&A tomorrow if we have time. Cool. Uh, Cam, we can come to this at the end. I'll just go through quickly now the um, bottom of the funnel because it won't take me too long. And then we can show where to find the leads who are engaging, coming in, messaging, etc. cetera, um, and how to find the hit list. So... Um, what we do with uh, the leads that are coming in, I've mentioned perfect earlier. So the perfect framework is essentially how we qualify leads. The best way to do this is along the impact calls. So we want to find out what's their problem. Who is everybody that's involved? How do they define results? Are they actually a fit? Remember, we shouldn't even get on a call with them if they're not a fit, right? We want to disqualify before they even get onto the call. 
Um, what evidence have they seen that they 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 know that you're an expert and like they can that you can get results? How committed are they in order to getting the result? So like, what are they already doing to get the result? And then how soon do they want to get the result? Okay, so that's the perfect framework. You can just remember perfect. Uh, take a screenshot of this. This is what you would do on the impact call. And then uh, now we just need to go through my favorite seller post, the bottom of the funnel where we get clients. So this is actually where we turn people who know, like, and trust us and our leads into clients. Or, you know, some people do take the fast track and they don't know us, but they see the bottom of the funnel post and they become a client right away. So uh, here's, here's an example of it. Okay, so I want you to fill in the blanks for me and you can get this posted up today. So here is the template, okay? Looking to outcome. So what's the outcome that you take your clients to? In just a few words, right? Looking to get more clients on social media. Looking to add 10 new patients to your clinic each week. What's the outcome that you take your clients to? As Paulson said earlier, if you can add numbers, then great. I've helped number of avatars. So how many avatars have you helped? How many people have you helped? So I've helped 12 dental clinics double their business or whatever their dream goal is. Like, what's their dream goal? And whatever you actually help people do. Okay, within how long? How long does it take you to help them get that result? And I'm taking on only however many more. Realistically, how many could you take on this month? You know, it's kind of like middle-ish, beginning of the month. How many clients could you take on this month, really? Just type that number in there. Um, so I'm taking on only X number more who want to do the same this month. Interested? Comment or DM me info and let's chat to see if it's a fit. Okay. So just fill in the blanks and uh, share it once you're done. So that would be an example of a bottom of the funnel post. So why don't we post this? It's platform agnostic. We can post it anywhere. We can send it to our email list. Get it out everywhere. I mean, if I'm looking at the fastest path to cash, email. Email, 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 email. However, when we're posting these, we're posting them everywhere. Facebook, Facebook stories, Instagram stories, Instagram feeds, LinkedIn, uh, group, you know, posting it everywhere. The key is, you know, if you're posting it up, you want to just like add an image or something just because they kind of flop if you just do it as a text post. That's the only thing. But you could also put it on top of a video. You know, you could have some B-roll video or something. You could also, uh, we had this one client, Brooke, who has, I don't know, 2,000 connections on LinkedIn. They're not even followers. They're like connections. She recorded it like a script. And she had 130 people comment. <laughs> her name is Brooke McGowan. You can type her in. Uh, actually, she works with, she, she does a lot of high level stuff. Yeah. 130 people comment on that thing. Crazy volume. Crazy volume for such a small audience as well. Insane. So, um, fill in the blanks, get it posted. It's really I love simple. this. Yeah, I love this because there's a practical application to what we're teaching. And someone said use odd numbers like 7, 9, 11, 71, 60, you know, uh, 97, I mean, 79. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but there's a pretty popular influencer that had some material around 67 steps to entrepreneurial success. And it was like, I mean, it was going, it was going viral everywhere for like two years almost. And then everybody else copied 67 steps as the next big thing. And it turned into like a, a thing. And it was, it was pretty interesting to see. Uh, but there is something about these numbers and, you know, there is something about the detail that you share. Um, and I, I think being vulnerable is something that we keep saying this, but I, I really think that's what you should stand on saying something like, Hey, I've worked with four dentists and these are the results we generated. One of them we weren't happy with. The other three we were. I would love to just share what worked for the three versus the one that it didn't work for. I mean, imagine just being honest and just, you know, just very like authentic with what you're sharing. Um, I think it goes a long way. But I like this, Lauren, the framework that you've shared, looking to present an outcome, you've helped with numbers and a, you know, a specific goal with timelines and things like that. And then it's comment or DM, whatever word, right? Whatever word that's relevant to that offer, I guess. 
Yeah, we just don't, like, the key is whenever we see this word come in into our high-level account, we are on it. <laughs> so we just use the info, <laughs> and then it obviously it all gets tagged up on the back end. Cam shared the, the flow yesterday, the automation for that. But um, also, we make sure that then these leads get onto a hit list. So Cam, now would be a really good time if it's okay. Yeah. Where you could share the hit list process if you're cool with that. Um, the hit list, by the way, is something that up until very recently, every morning I would do without fail. So it's a list of leads who have the most intent of actually working with us. And if you have them on a hit list, it's like, you know, when someone messages you and if you're just not tracking that, that's like literally you're basically putting money down the toilet because oh. if you're you don't have your leads getting tracked it's like it's insane to me i just can't believe that so many people don't track their leads like high level is so good to ensure that you're tracking your leads and so yeah cam um let's show the hit list process because uh this one's this one's a good one sure cool so the hit list is um as lauren said it's actually quite simple to set up with uh go high level so as we went through yesterday uh with the bottom of funnel uh, or the automations to get people into uh, the system. Once they comment info, obviously info is the bottom of funnel. Those are the people that we want on the hit list. Those are the people that have raised their hand and said, we want what you're talking about. So they go into the uh, DM, uh, let's say the automation. This is the automation that we went through yesterday. Let me zoom in a little bit. Um, actually, I'm going to get lost. Let me zoom out a little bit. <laughs> um, so they go through the automation they have the uh initial conversation this is where we may either have the open-ended conversation uh, the question or we'll send them the link to the uh pre-book call if they book the call that will remove them from this automation but if they don't then they you'll see here in a number of locations there's just add to bof hit list so this will add a tag which will be our um, bottom of funnel hit list tag and then the way that we track this is in our contacts you'll see here we've got a hit list uh, section so we'll come into the contacts and you'll be able to do this with, a, with, with just filtering for a tag so it's list bottom of funnel hit list and then you'll have all of the people here and you'll be able to go through like this list won't be massive because what will happen is your your hit list will rotate so there will be a key number of people that you're trying to contact and being in touch with obviously with lauren if she's got 400 people joining the hit list we don't want to have to be thinking about following up with 400 people so obviously anyone that books in a, a scale session or an impact call they will get taken off the hit list if there is a hard no or if they ghost for long enough we'll take away the hit list tag so that we're not constantly uh, having to manually follow up with people, we let the content do that. So if they ghosted us, then there's probably a reason, maybe it's not the right time or you know they're busy, whatever. So we'll take them off the hit list and then we'll let the middle of funnel, top of funnel, and then maybe another bottom of funnel piece of content in a week, two weeks, a month, six months to bring them back into the system. And that's where so in here, we will um, be contacting all of these people. Um, and it's very simple. Obviously, I can't do it on here because we don't have any data, but the name would be here. You just click into it, and then it will be a contact that you can uh, have the conversation with. So as if it's a conversation, obviously, you yeah, can... Yeah, if uh, you want to... Maybe if you want to add a fake contact, like John Doe or something, so people can kind of maybe yeah. see it. Well, um, what... Yeah, what's interesting is, you know, I don't think many people create a segmentation like this with the most interacted leads or the most recent hottest leads where they're pounding them or being very rhythmic with them versus taking them off the pressure and their content kind of just kind of curating them. Can you, you know, help us understand the strategy behind that a bit more, Lauren? I can talk about it, yeah. Uh, okay, so let me tell you why we do this. So I used to carry around this tiny freaking notebook with me everywhere because I always used to do my DMing on my phone. And um, 
anyone that like knows me will vouch for this. Like literally, I would have this tiny notebook always, like <laughs> always. <laughs> I remember being like traveling around the US with this thing. Anyways, so um, I would write their name, their username, and it would get so frustrating because like if people change their username, I couldn't find them anymore. So I got so like, oh man, that was such a good lead and now I don't find them. And I didn't know what to do because I was getting, you know, a lot of DMs and I was messaging a lot of people. And so then I remember I went into high level one time and I saw like all the pipelines and stuff and I got really confused because it just didn't make sense to me again. Like maybe we've illustrated this, but uh, the tech stuff, I love it just to make my life better. But if I can't figure it out, uh, I just it kind of stresses me out. So I thought hmm, maybe there's like a better way I could do this. And I love email marketing. And so I knew about tagging. So I thought, huh, maybe I can like add a tag to their name, like a hit list tag, you know? So I did. And then it filtered them all exactly how I needed it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't have to write their, la their names in a notebook anymore. Because by the way, in between that time, I tried another solution. I took screenshots every time I got a good lead and I, I sent it to myself on a WhatsApp chat. But then again, same problem. Like, you know, uh, they would change their username or something and I couldn't find them anymore. So then in high level, like if they change their username, it doesn't change. It doesn't mess it up because it's attached to their account, I guess. somehow. Profile, their profile, yeah. yeah. Their yeah. user ID or whatever. So it was amazing. And also you could merge the contacts. So if I'm having a chat on Facebook or texting and Instagram, it's all in one place. If I had that email, it's all like all in one. So if they ghost me on Instagram, I can message them on Facebook. I can phone them. I can email them. It's crazy. Um, and so basically what happens is this. You add a hit list tag to their name like Cam showed to you. And then if they're not messaging you for a while, they go cold. They tell you like, hey, it's my daughter's wedding. So I'm going to be off the grid for a few weeks. You just take them off and you add them to a long-term hit list. Okay. And so then instead of like trying to chase your long-term hit list and going into individually message them, I mean, on ours right now, there's going to be thousands of people there. You email them. You can just send an email blast to them and you send the impact offer to them via email. So instead of then manually going one-on-one, -on -one, or you can send like, you know, a nine word email uh, from Dean Jackson. You can say like, you know, name, are you still looking to get clients from social media? Send a nine word email, boom, get replies, follow up with them. If you've got their phone number, just dial them right then and there. And you can also just do it on the Lead Connector app as well on high level too. So um, that's essentially how it works. When it comes to how long do I keep someone on my hit list from the last point of contact, usually a couple of weeks, unless they tell me otherwise. And then as well, if someone's had a impact call with us, if they um, like didn't close on their sales call, and then if the sales closer of our team is not closing them and it's kind of the, the closer's not like, it's not been like two weeks and now they don't close it anymore, then we'll add them back to the long-term hit list and keep following up with them. So that's how that works. It's beautiful because it means that you maximize the sales that you're generating from all your leads and it's like people aren't slipping out through the cracks. So yeah. while I'd say like we're very strong on social media, the reason why it works so well and we generate a lot of clients and this system will work so well for you to generate clients if you stick to it is because of this as well. Like you're consistently following up with the leads and this is really what it takes to have consistent clients coming through because it's not just going to be magic. Like clients are going to just come through the door and if you keep sending them messages like, hey, quick question or hey, just following up or like, hey, just bumping this. You know, people aren't going to reply to you. The follow-up like needs to be value-added follow-up. So what does value-added follow-up mean? It's like you're actually sending them value. So, you know. Uh, like education-based follow-up, right? Yeah, or like, you know, let's just say, Paulson, you told me before that like you have a problem that you, you know, you, you just can't seem to get any engagement on social media. Paulson was just thinking of you. I just put out this new Instagram reel that breaks down how to get engagement on social media, um, want me to send it over to you. You don't just spam it at them. You ask for the little hand raise and then yes, okay, cool. Here's the, here's the, here's the video person. I hope it helps. Um, so does that mean like you're still struggling with getting engagement on social media? You're like, yeah, still struggling to get engagement on social media. Okay. Well, how about this? Like, I'll give you a quick five to 10 minute brainstorm some point today so we can have a look at your social media. Like what's going wrong? What are two times that work for you? Boom. You tell me two times and then, you know, you lock in the call in the calendar in high level or you send the link and, uh, jump on the impact call. And then from there, you know, the rest is history.
I, I love that because this is what everyone else doesn't do. It's the educated follow-up. They just follow up, but they don't provide any value. And it sounds so like simple to say, but most people don't do it. They're just like, you can tell, like, I mean, when you look at the automations, you can tell they just want to sell you something. They don't, there's no like care as a customer, right? There's no, you know, there's no, uh, you know, empathy. There's no like, you know, real depth in the conversation, except, oh, I would like to just get you on a call so I can sell you something. But when you're leading and saying, hey, I, I remember us talking about social media a couple of couple of weeks ago, and I don't worry about buying anything, but can I just give you my seven steps to a thousand followers or 10 book calls that I've shared with fellow dentists like yourself? Imagine that. Imagine the brand positioning. Imagine the type of phone calls you will get if somebody still says, yes, could we do a call, right? Um, but yeah, keep going. Yeah, look, I mean, we've been through a lot. So just to recap, what we ultimately went through today was top of the funnel posts so that you can reach more people using social, okay? Um, now again, we want to be doing that Mondays and Fridays, every Monday, every Friday, let's get social so that you're reaching more people. And then what we'll do Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Tuesdays, we usually go through for that, like problem solution type of content, like with our client who's has the law firm, helping people save money on taxes, um, where essentially we take a problem that we're hearing in sales and we show how our system overcomes that problem. Wednesdays direct so we want to just put out that free offer out there to get people to just comment a keyword obviously we're leveraging throughout this whole process the automations on the back end so that when people comment it sends it out to them so that then we can get the conversation going thursdays we want to go ahead and put an offer out there which is those examples that we just did and again obviously fridays was the reaching more people um so it's just five posts each week it doesn't it really should not be taking more than 45 minutes um a week to get all this content done posted platform agnostic can post it anywhere also send it out via email and then what we showed as well is the impactful process so once we're getting people to actually raise their hand we just want to make sure that they're a fit and they have a problem that we can solve and then from there let's invite them on a quick five to ten minute call and on that five to ten minute call we're not coaching we're not having like a long conversation we're having a quick chat because essentially you can think about it like this disqualify as quickly as we can because we don't want to spend time speaking to people that are never going to buy from us or at least that aren't going to buy right now because if they're not going to buy right now we can add them to a long-term hit list if they're going to buy right now though then we need to make sure that they're qualified and that we're getting them on a sales call however what you'll find is like 40 percent of people that you get on that impact call with pass through to a sales call that means 60 percent are getting disqualified so if every 10 people that you speak to, six of them aren't even going to be a good fit for your full sales call. And that's okay. That's how it should be. That's how the numbers will look. So if we have those expectations in place, and obviously, you know, it's industry dependent, it's positioning dependent, right? Like if you're not yet sort of quite established in your space, then maybe you'll have less success uh, and less than 40% of people who you get on it uh, on an impact call with passing through to a sales call. Um, but what we want to be doing with the impact call system is pre-selling. And I shared the video script in the chat and also as the comment, just because, you know, you can then use that script and then put that on your funnel page, on your high level page. And what we've done is we've put this entire system into the snapshot. <laughs> so what does that mean? Like when I say snapshot, um, basically it means like if you sign up to the free trial of high level, and then um, you actually become paying user of high level, then we're putting the system that we've built like the system that we use every single day into your account and you can use it to scale your business like this is what we're using every single day this is a system that we've we've used to generate more than a thousand clients online at zero cost um and obviously now you know as well we're running ads with it and we'll be talking about that more tomorrow as well like how can you uh go ahead and amplify all this stuff especially in the beginning if your organic stuff is taking a while to ramp up so uh yeah Paulson that's pretty much like the overview of today I know we went through a lot and we could probably keep talking forever but um <laughs> yeah. yeah hopefully that's so, uh, a good clarity for now yeah no this is this is fantastic Kim I also want to say thank you to you on helping us understand the automations as well um so those of you that are watching jump into the 30-day trial you get you get the snapshot that Kim and Lauren are kind of just sharing and just all set up for you as well. 
Um, and if you ever need help, if you're stuck on high level, you can go always go to our success rooms, which is speakwith.us slash success. Jump on a one-on-one -on -one live Zoom call with uh, a ton of people in our world and get help with high level. It's 24-7 weekends as well. Um, Lauren, you know, what are we going to learn day three? We're, you know, kind of concluded day two. What what can we expect tomorrow uh, as, you know, a ton of people are just kind of excited for more? Yeah. So, I mean, tomorrow is all about scaling. So we've been speaking about the client generating machine. Tomorrow is all about scaling the client generating machine. So we're going to be looking at three key things. The offer cyclone, we're going to be looking at paid ads, and we're going to be looking at online events. So Ooh, okay. um, I won't say too much more for now, but okay. obviously we're on the <laughs> online event right now. But yeah, tomorrow is going to be really, really good. Um, I think the key thing is like in between now and then, get some of these posts up, right? Because um, we, I, I just think it's such a shame not to get into momentum right now. You know, you're here, you're putting your attention on watching this. So time's going to pass either way, so you might as well make the most of it. And so given that you're already here, you've already taken the effort to register, to show up, to get yourself here, take the templates that we went through today, get them posted. Because what are you going to lose? Nothing. You're going to gather data. If it doesn't perform, then that's data that the angle didn't work. If it does perform, then hey, you've just got yourself some new leads. Okay. So what, what I want to do is I want to see you guys get those posted because yeah, tomorrow, like we're talking about scaling. And uh, if you can't do the basics, then you're definitely not going to be able to do the scaling stuff. So I want to see you do the basic stuff so that we can get the scaling stuff rolling on through. Uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be uh, a really interactive session. And we're going to be going over a lot of stuff that's really, really focused on generating leads and clients. Um, okay. Stuff that's, you know, maybe a little more advanced, but that's going to be that's going to be for those that are serious about scaling. I, I love it. So if you're already an existing high level customer, we'll release the snapshots to you uh, probably later after day three. But if you're on the 97 plan, uh, go to the same link. You'll be able to go to the 297. If you're already on the 297, you can move up to the 497 to get the snapshots quicker. But either way, you can get help with the kickoff call and all of that when you sign up for these links as well. But um, real quick, give me a yes in the comments of the streaming if you had some golden nuggets that you were able to take away today. I want to make sure Lauren and Cam feels a love of almost, you know, a month plus of planning the workshop and things like that. And we have more. Well, if you thought today was cool, wait till tomorrow. It's going to be even more exciting to be able to scale the right way, you know? So give me a yes in the chat. Just type in the word Y-E-S across all channels, uh, just as in appreciation, because, you know, in all in all reality, they're doing this for free. Obviously, Lauren will get these uh, trials affiliated to her, but regardless, you know, we're, we're doing this out of the goodness of our heart, teaching and coaching uh, and kind of helping you level up your marketing and sales skills with high level in mind. So a ton of yes is coming in. So we'll see you tomorrow, 12 o'clock EST. That's New York time for those of you that are international. Uh, we are going to skip the Q&A call. I mean, the Q&A portion of the call today because we've went quite a bit on the time, but feel free to add questions in the comments. Whenever we get a chance between Cam, Lauren, myself, Ethan, and a couple of other people in the in the team, like we'll go through and answer as many questions as we can. No promises there, but go ahead and put your questions tomorrow. Uh, and maybe towards the end of the call, we'll do a Q&A as well. But either way, thanks for jumping into day two. It's been fantastic. Uh, and one more day for the client, the new client machine. Those for those of you that are maybe even just now jumping in, but yeah, take a look at all the replays. There's links across the board on YouTube, all the channels. Uh, but we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.